Hi, this is the Trezor Model T crypto hardware wallet. I'm sure I've done videos on these before and you should have a crypto hardware wallet if you're into crypto because if you don't hold the keys, then you don't own it. If you're relying on some software wallet or exchange wallet or something like that where you don't own, hold the private keys yourself, then yeah, you might come a gutter. So um, I use crypto hardware wallets. Trezor is uh, the one I use, the one I like. I've got quite a few of them, but I you know, just like the Trezor system. It works. And I've got the, a couple of these Model uh, T units. I've got the Model 1 as well, but I like the Model T. It's got the touchy-feely screen. But uh, one of the good things I like about this is that it's actually open source, not only open source uh, software and firmware like the ecosystem, the application and the firmware that goes into its open source, but it's open source hardware as well. So in theory, you can build one of these yourself without having to rely on the uh, supply chain and potentially get hit by supply chain man in the middle attacks. Because if you aren't aware, simply do not buy a crypto hardware wallet anywhere but the official manufacturer or one of their official authorized dealers because if you do you can get hit with uh, like a supply chain or man in the middle attack and the way these things work is that uh, when they ship you well there's a couple of methods it works one of them is that uh, they can like buy these and then pretend to be a deal authorized dealer and sell them and then they can install uh, custom firmware on here which then can report back and steal your crypto some way like that or another way to do it is to supply you and like authentic looking uh, keyword seed sheet with the unit and then you think oh this is my super secret key and everything but no <laughs> you do not do that if your crypto hardware wallet doesn't matter what brand it is is supplied with a uh, a pre-existing seed key uh, private key then you're being scammed because you're supposed to generate it on the unit itself secretly and ideally on a like isolated non-internet connected uh, machine like a clean uh, machine so that nobody but you has the seed key for this. The thing with your keyword seed recovery sheet is that you should treat this like cash because if anyone has that then they don't need your Trezor, they don't need your hardware wallet. They can simply use that and recover either onto another hardware wallet they uh, buy or just a software wallet. They can simply recover that in minutes and steal all of your crypto. So you want to store that in like your safe deposit box, bury it in your backyard, although it's paper. So but yeah, maybe something more durable than that. Um, yeah, treat it like cash because if somebody has that, they can steal everything. So you can talk about all the security aspects of hardware wallets until the cows come home, but the fact is they don't need this. They can just get your seed sheet. So yeah, keep that secret squirrel. So here's the Model T, and one of the things I don't like about it is the tiny little screen on it. Now, I do not have big fingers, but it's like it's really hard to get in there and push these buttons. It's really quite annoying. So I've always wanted to try and build my own Trezor Model T and potentially like improve it by maybe uh, putting on like a bigger, building a bigger compatible screen into it. Because I don't want to have to like rewrite the firmware or anything like that. I want it to be completely firmware uh, compatible, but have a nice bigger touchscreen so maybe there's a compatible one that works exactly the same with the existing firmware and everything and then I could mount it in maybe like a nice machined aluminium case I could pot it and I could put on multiple USB connectors and things like that because if your USB port on this goes bust then well you haven't lost your crypto but it's just really annoying because then you got to get your seed recovery uh, sheet and then uh, set up a new one from scratch and that's a lot of time and effort it's really annoying so I don't know you might put on multiple USB uh, ports. I even had uh, ideas of maybe adding like a second little uh, memory LCD on there or a um, e-ink uh, LCD and potentially having like a power up counter on there. So like you can secretly know if anyone's been trying to hack in to your uh, a little crypto hardware wallet. So then you'll be able to know if anyone's tried to secretly hack into your hardware wallet without knowing because then it increments a counter on there. You'll know how many power-ups it's done and things like that. Although they could probably implement that in the firmware in, uh, as well. Uh, so Trezor, if you're listening, um, I've tweeted to this years ago. But anyway, uh, yeah, that'd be a nice feature. Like, you know, it's been powered up X amount of times. So, so yeah, you never know when you might want to know how many times this has been powered up.
So yeah, that's one of the cool things about this is that it's completely open source hardware uh, and software so that you can potentially, in theory, make your own and then bypass the supply chain entirely so that you're not trusting anyone. So anyway, let's uh, take a look at their uh, website because when they first released this, I was disappointed that they didn't actually have the hardware files, the hardware, they didn't release the hardware files for it. And they have actually since released it. It's been a while, but haven't gotten around to it. So let's take a look. Uh, this is their GitHub page. So they've got the uh, Trezor firmware here, the Trezor suite, which is the software. They transitioned from like a web-based uh, user interface to an application-based uh, user interface. And I like it much better. Although the web one, of course, you didn't have to install any software. It just worked from the interwebs. Um, but yeah, that's it. So the application is open source. I think it might be multiple. I use Windows, but might be available on multiple platforms. Uh, then they've got Connect, easy integration into third party services, account balance backend. They've got a communications daemon written in Go. Oh. I don't know, but um, yeah, like there's a very cool ecosystem surrounding the uh, Trezor here, and in terms of like being able to integrate it into other products and stuff like that, which is really cool. Right, so let's take a look at the GitHub repository. We've got the uh, Trezor Suite uh, Mono Repo. I don't know what that means. Look, I don't know. I like I don't use GitHub, so if I use all the terminology wrong, I just don't know what I'm freaking doing. It's like I do have a GitHub account and I've got some stuff on there, including DaveCAD, but I just know. I'm not a GitHub person. Uh, Trezor firmware. Uh, we, we're not really going to touch the uh, firmware, but uh, because, you know, I want to build up one of these from scratch, design and build, um, yeah, we're going to have to get the firmware. I don't want to have to compile it and everything, but I want the, like the the image that I can download to my micro when I plug it on there. So that could be an adventure in its own right. So we won't go into the uh, Trezor So we won't go into the firmware. Um, Blockbook... Uh, Sithon hid, hid API. I have no Python wrapper for the hid. I, I got no idea. <laughs> Micro Python connect wallet data or data the go blockchain. Yeah, we want hardware. We want hardware. Trezor common. Don't post issues. Uh, Trezor UTXO lib Android. Uh, that's nice. Link test scenarios. Password manager. HD wallet. No in Java. No, Trezor Wallet, obsolete, do not use, uh, address validator, Trezor Hardware, there we go, Trezor Crypto, FIDO2 test, Stellar Account Viewer, okay, anyway, there we go, we're in the hardware, it's uh, C, it's uh, AGPL 3.0 license for those playing along at home, let's go into the Trezor Hardware, shall we, and they've got... That's it. Uh, they've got the case, the electronics, and uh, production test, self-test thing, something like that. We're not really concerned with that. Doc make file, Trezor, test Trezor. Yeah, it's just uh, some sort of production testing. Not too fussed about that, although you might have to use it if you build it up. Uh, probably not. should just be able to, um, in theory, you should just have to take the Gerber files uh, that they should provide and then send it to the manufacturer, get it made, buy the parts based on the bomb. And then you burn the uh, firmware. I think it's an ST um, uh, micro in here. So you just burn the firmware using an ST programmer and Bob's your uncle. That's the theory anyway. So the case, let's have a look at the case. Uh, there are two different ones. One's the Model 1, it's the older one. But if you're going to get a Trezor, I recommend the Model T. It's just got the nice touchy-feely in, in a bigger touch screen. It's just more better. So that's version 3 of the Trezor 1, but really uh, Model T. So you might have to use this as a baseline to uh, design like a custom case or something. It's got top and bottom STL files, that's it. Okay, last update 11 months ago. Uh, electronics, this is what we want. Ta-da! Let's have a look at the older Model 1, and it's got like the board JPEG and stuff. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's the Model 1. I've done a teardown of that. Uh, programmer.board, that looks like .sketch. They look like Eagle files. Uh, Raspy? What's Raspy? Oh, is that a programmer? Oh, is that a Raspberry Pi program? Oh! I think that's a Raspberry Pi programmer, is it? I, I guess so. That's part of their programming system i would presume uh the, they've they've got a bomb that's the, that's for the old one anyway we want the new one because i want to do i want to make this like a multi-part series actually designing and making uh, and uh, p potentially improving the trezor because it's all open source hardware which is cool so we're going to the model t that's it <laughs> that's it the board and the schematic file really 
where's the where's like the project file the bomb where's the like it'd be nice like if you had like a pdf of the schematic and like images where's everything last input five months ago geez they haven't really updated anything have they so these look like eagle files we're in yep eagle uh version 7.7 .7 of eagle um it's the xml no workers board file is also done with eagle 7.70 so that's it. Well, that's disappointing. That's not really, I mean, it's it's open hardware um, in terms of, well, you know, you can get the board and the schematic, so we can load those into Eagle, although we can import them into uh, KeyCab, which I'll try and do here, or we can import them into Altium, whatever your favorite uh, package is, you should be able to import that and then get the board manufactured. But where are the Gerbers? Where are the Gerbers? Like, uh, you know, the whole idea, the cool thing about this is that you should just be able to grab the Gerbers, upload them to whatever $2 uh, PCB manufacturer you want and get the boards for de delivered for like five bucks delivered or something, whatever the ridiculously low price is this week um, and make your own. And then just, and where's the bomb? Where's, where's the bill of materials? The bill of materials is going to be very different for this than it is from the... Uh, well, maybe it's like built into the schematic, but no, that's no, no, that's a thumbs down. That's a thumbs down right off the bat um, for not having like a bill of materials and other stuff. And there's there's uh, uh, Pavel. Good on you, Pavel. Look at that beard. Looks like a happy guy. All around hacker working on Trezor, Tropic Square, NixOS, and other open source project in pr Prague in the Czech Republic. Hi to all my Czech viewers. Um, so, yeah, please. Um, you've got more stuff there. Please just dump it in here. I'm sure it's not hard. Anyway, I'll download those and see what we get. Now, one of the annoying things about GitHub and a trap for young players is you can't just go save link as like that because then it'll download the HTML instead of the real file. So even though it will, it'll actually save it as the .brd file, it's actually HTML and it won't work. So yeah, you've got to like download the Git thing. I don't know. Yeah, and, and like that's another annoying thing. Like I don't even think you can like download, can you? Like, you can't download this particular, there's no, like, there's go to file, but there's no, like, download zip or whatever. It's just, it's stupid. I know you're supposed to, like, do the command line git pull or some rubbish like that, I don't know. But, um, yeah, anyway, here we go. We can download zip. Okay, so I've got the latest version of Eagly 9.6.2. It should be able to open the old ones. I don't know, I don't use Eagle, but, uh, yeah, let's go. And we're in like Flynn. Look at that. Beautiful. There you go. There's our... Uh, it doesn't... Oh, I didn't know Eagle opened up different windows for the schematic. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've used it. But there you go. And it looks like... See, we can get our bomb from here potentially. Like, I don't know how the Eagle thing works. It device, if they got, like, footprints, but they don't have, like, links to anything, do they? Like, they don't have, like, digikey links or something like that see it'd be nice to have a bomb for this thing like all your generic parts and things like that that's all like hunky-dory like all your you know your lcs and r's and stuff no wackers you can just sort of get anything but you know things like the lcd and stuff like that you've got to get very specific ones there it is okay so that looks like at least they got the very specific part number no that might be the connector see that might be the connector i have to google that one but that could very well be the connector, not the actual LCD. And that, well, kind of makes sense on the schematic side of things. But that that's incredibly annoying. Most other things are being okay. Like, because that's one of the things I want is, hey, what LCD do they use in there? Uh, have I done it? No, I don't think I've done a teardown of the Trezor Model T. I'm sure you could get the info somewhere. Someone's probably done a teardown. Get this thing made. So ideally, maybe at the end of this uh, video series, I'll have like a, uh, a bomb like either a digikey or a mouser bomb or an, or a JLC uh, like bomb or something like that and then the board and you can just potentially just uh, turnkey it that'd be nice if you can just you know hit one of those order buttons you might even be able to get maybe this could be a trial leave a thumbs up in the comments leave a comment down below if you want to see this maybe I could uh, potentially use one of those like turnkey services perhaps so that and then you can make it publicly uh, available because this is all open source hardware so if I do anything with this I've got to re-release it as open source uh, hardware as well I can make it publicly available so anyone in theory can just push a button and they then you get an assembled board but then you've got to trust the manufacturer don't you you've got to trust that they haven't done anything 
uh, sneaky bugger. Like, but then again, one, once you get the hardware, you can just like reflash it yourself. So that's not, you know, you don't have to get a program. You can just nuke it. Um, so that's fine. So that's pretty safe. But yeah, let's know if you want me to do that. Maybe that should be the goal of this little series. Yeah, these clamps up here, you know, we've got part numbers. We've got part numbers for like the fuse here and stuff. And, you know, so that's okay. But it's, it's just not the same as having a proper bomb. Please, Trezor. So on the EV blog uh, open source hardware logo uh, thing, which is still a thing, a lot of people uh, use this, and I think it's great. They do provide the schematics and the PCB, and they do have the mechanical CAD files, firmware, software, but they don't have any, there's no, de well, there might be design documentation. I have a, well, they don't have a bill of materials, so it fails at that. Licensed start uh, use does not restrict uh, commercial use, so commercial use is fine, I believe. Yeah, so it's like bill of materials is like really annoying. And then there's arguments over that world beat. Yeah, you get the PCB the original file, but you don't get the Gerbers. So it's like, maybe I should have added like another one saying manufacturability or something like that. Anyway, let's open up the PCB board dot board file and bingo, we're in. Oh, wuckers. Like these are all big fat dots. What's what's going on there? I don't, once again, I don't use Eagle. Is that like an Eagle thing or is it? And they're all like, uh, they don't line up. So I'm not sure what the deal is there it's not like one is the board outline because here's your board outline i so don't know how to use eagle um yeah so we got a yellow is our board outline no wuckers so i don't know what the deal is with the other thing is that an eagle thing or is it just something that they've done i don't <laughs> i don't know what the deal is <laughs> anyway um yeah there you go oh it's a it's a four layer board okay oh i didn't think that the free version supports a four layer board I, i'm pretty sure it doesn't no it doesn't uh two schematic sheets two signal layers there you go and of course it's a tiny board so it fits in the area but only supports two signal layers so the free version does not support you cannot get this thing in theory like we should not even be able to generate the gerbers i guess from this so that's pretty useless um so yeah i might try and do the import thing i might import it into uh keycad i was going to do that anyway because i don't want to use eagle um because keycad of course is open source so it's more fitting to use uh keycad for like an open source project like this whatever anyway it loads okay so i got uh, the latest version of keycad although there is like a version 6 beta or something meh whatever um let's see if we can import an eagle cad electronics model t can we do no we can only just do the board Import. Okay. Oh, hang on. We did get an error message. Unsupported Eagle layer T test. 37 converted to drawings user layer. Okay. I don't know. Restrict drill legend measures. Okay. So there were issues importing this, but we did get it. There you go. Um, so we do have the layer details. That's nice. <laughs> don't like the blue on black. Um, there you go. They've done their layer stack up. Very nice. Uh, it's a one one millimeter PCB. Okay, there you go. Didn't know. Oh yeah, that makes sense in a tiny little you know thin thing like that. Might not be able to fit one point because you've got to get the uh, the touch screen and the uh, whatnot in there. So one millimeter already. That's a bit odd. But well, you know, I might go for like 0.8 or because I'm going to design my own uh, like you know improved version of it uh, bigger potentially then well it can be one point standard 1.6 or you know you typically go with a 0.8 you wouldn't normally uh, go with a one unless you uh, had to because it's just uh, less common vertaki plan I have no, <laughs> no idea what that is geez that's going back isn't it 24th of the 7th 2018 wow is it that old really Okay, now it's mixing uh, sheets. So the brown in the background there, that is the uh, generated template for uh, KeyCAD. And the blue one is for EagleCAD. So that's, yeah, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Anyway, it looks like, um, yeah, this has not gone well. Um, it's, it's got like broken nets and, well, it's showing broken nets and stuff. But I guess if you, because it's a four layer, we've got a ground and power and it's just, it's not doing terrific. 
So yeah, that's not, you know, it's not trivial to import these and to convert between one package and another. Once again, you know, if you've got more experience in uh, like importing Eagle files into KiCad, like a, I, I really am a complete noob at uh, KiCad, uh, let alone importing Eagle into KiCad. So yeah, um, and Solder Mask expansion. Look at that. No, I mean, it's just, it's just none. Look, it's just complete under, under the part, under the entire part. Not around the pad. Oh, that's terrible, Muriel. But those pads seem to be okay. But yeah, no. So you've got to fix like the solder mask expansion. So you can't just like import this and then just hit generate Gerber and get it manufactured. You, you know, it's going to be an absolute mess. Um, let alone what's happening with all these nets. I mean, ground, you might have to assign, you know, the power planes probably weren't imported properly. I don't. You know, I like I, I still don't know what all this deal up here is. Like this converted these into lines. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's going to require a lot of cleanup. This is many hours of me to a they figure out what's going on here and then b clean it up. So I won't be doing that in this video. This is just making see seeing in part one, seeing if I can import and see what was what. Very disappointed that we couldn't just get the Gerbers and just get it manufactured because I might have done that. I might have just got the got the Gerbers and then boom. Um, so yeah, um, but I can still do that. I can generate them from Eagle, I guess. Um, but yeah, I can't just, you don't want to be just be pushing generate Gerber on this. That's, that's just a mess. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening with the ground and power planes and stuff. Um, so they're obviously the only not net connected thing. So they're all ground. What's like P dollars one? Um, uh, like, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, these do have nets IC2 pad, like it just doesn't know what it's doing. So yeah, but that's common with imports. So yeah, some work required. Generated a dot pretty. I don't know what a dot pretty is. And then it's like loaded all this and like, I don't like <laughs> 0201. What is there an 0201 part? No, there can't be. Something else is got, like, this is supposed to be the library, imported library for the Eagle import. I mean, look at all these packages. <laughs> that's just, no, that's just, no, that's bad. 25.12 and then $25.12 refund. Like, I don't, this is a mess. I'd be tempted not to even reuse that at all. Like, uh, if I'm going to do a new one, I'd import the schematic, get the schematic tidied up, get the bomb tidied up, and then just generate a new board and start that from scratch. Because it doesn't take a long time to lay out a board like that. I mean, you know, there's not a huge number of parts on it. It's not very complicated. So... Uh, yeah, you know, you might take the outline and stuff like that if you were going to use that and then just nuke it. Maybe, maybe you know, keep some things like, like the connector in place and stuff like that. But you might want to nuke that from orbit. Uh, it's the only way to be sure. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. See, here's the problem. Because there was no project, it looks like KiCad only imports like project files and if you select just the schematic or pcb it wants to create like a new project directory for the schematic and for the pcb like separate ones it's just i i don't know i don't have enough experience with keycap but that seems to be a limitation For some reason keycap shut down and it's like i just what the heck happened oh god no this is a mess okay import the schematic what i opened the schematic and i got the pcb what the heck Okay, anyway, um, yeah, that's weird, but we're in, and there's our schematic. It's done an okay job. That's pretty usable. I don't know what all these words here are. <laughs> that is not, uh, <laughs> that is not English. Symbol RAM A3. Why is there a RAM A3 symbol under there? Okay, there you go. Why is it moving the frame? Is that a keycad thing? Why, like, the template. It's moving the template with the part. That's really weird. Anyway, the part is the part. So how do, can we like edit a part? Once again, I don't have enough experience with KiCad to really like know what I'm doing here, unfortunately. So once again, like this is many, many hours of work to get this, like to import this from Eagle into KiCad and then get it all usable and set up the proper bill of materials. And, you know, KiCad, uh, call, I believe it supports like all the data sheet links and the bomb links and stuff like that. But you'd have to go through like, yeah, every single item. Anyway, let's do, can we get a uh, 3D view of the PCB? See if it works. Cannot determine board outline. Nah. 
So once again, yeah, it like it didn't import the board outline properly. So there's our th <laughs> there's our three D view. So yeah, that's uh, not exactly spectacular, is it? <laughs> yeah, it just thinks we've got a square board. But yeah, that's all right. Like, and there's no uh, component. I didn't, you know, it's not going to import like component models and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's not a thing. So that's as probably as good as you can expect. Oh, that's what. Okay, that's what. Is that what those pads? Right. You know how I thought that the uh, that the capacitors had the solder mask all the way under. It wasn't. That looks like it's glue. That looks like it's a, a glue point. Don't know why you'd bother. It's not a double-sided load, so you don't have to glue the components down before you reflow them. Um, so yeah, I, is that part of was that in the eagle thing, or is that part of the import? So yeah, uh, so I assume that that's what that is, without actually going and inspecting. But as I said, yeah, there's no solder mask uh, between pins or anything like that. So yeah, you can't just import this and get it manufactured. It's just <laughs> it's no, it's not going to work. Right, so that's kind of annoying. So that, uh, uh, what do we do for part two of this video? Leave it in the comments down below. Do I <laughs> spend oodles of my time trying to convert this into and tidy this up into a workable KiCad project and then try and like make it, you know, get all the bill of materials and then make it all turnkey and stuff like that. There's probably three or four parts to just doing that video. Well, at, at least really. Or should part two of this just be me like seeing if I can just manufacture this myself, actually get one made from the supplied uh, GitHub, the Eagle file. So just use Eagle, just generate the Gerbers. Hopefully there's no issues there. And then uh, send it to, you know, one hung low PCB manufacturer and get it made and then order the parts, try and get some sort of bill of materials, probably manually, and then um, get it together, like, and then build it up and see if I can get a working Trezor. Um, should that be part two? Or do you want me to actually go down the rabbit hole of <laughs> effectively learning KiCad? Um, and because, you know, like, it's one thing to do KiCad from, you know, with very little knowledge of KiCad, although I'm an experienced professional PCB designer, I'm an Altium guy, right? So very little KiCad experience. It's one thing to actually start a board from scratch. And it's another thing to like import an Eagle file and be messed and be left with like a huge mess to try and tidy up. It might even be easiest just to simply start from scratch, get a, like a physical printout of the uh, of the schematic and just manually create parts from scratch rather than try and import. Although we do have this schematic imported, but is it better just to simply, I don't know, start from scratch are that like I maybe this STM parts available in KiCad and you know you've got the you know I'm sure there'll be a USB uh, C connector in you know the parts somewhere and and things like that so you know apart from that it's all fairly generic oh, there's a few oddball uh, protection devices uh, perhaps like ESD protection and stuff like that but is it easier just to start from scratch or should you <laughs> I don't know. Am I pushing the brown stuff up a hill with a pointy stick by trying to import the eagle files? Which is easier? Anyway, I'll leave it for this video. Please leave it in the comments down below what you think I should uh, do with this because, well, yeah, I don't know. Schematic seems okay, but I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can just see a lot of hours working this. Anyway, yeah, I think, um, yeah, that, that's a thumbs down for the Trezor open source. You know, technically you can do it, but they don't make it easy to manufacture one of these on your own. And really that would have been, like, I'd be advertising that fact. Look, if you want to buy it from us, we're safe and secure. You know, buy us. It's already assembled, tested, programmed and everything else. But, you know, if you're ultra paranoid or you just want to do it yourself, um, then here's all the Gerber files or here's, you know, and here's the DigiKey bill of materials or here's, you know, the turnkey JLC uh, thing. So Trezor would actually be in a much easier and simpler position to actually generate something like that. I've got to like go through all the hard work to redo the, the whole kit and caboodle. So yeah, not impressed. No bill of materials, no Gerbers, just a couple of Eagle schematic and PCB board. Oh, fail. Anyway, hope you like that. Catch you next time.